In this video, we're going to go back and talk a little bit about the purpose of refrigeration, which is food preservation. So, as you know, with refrigeration, we're dealing with one of the most important things in our lives, which is the food. It's also important to make sure that the food being served to others, sold to others, or produced for others is safe for human consumption. So, the perishable food industry is one of the largest industries in the country. An industry of this is extremely important, and proper refrigeration is an important factor in the success of the business, as well as the safety of everybody involved. Perishable foods can be classified as follows. You have meat, you have poultry, you have seafood, you have fruits, you have vegetables, and you have dairy products. Perishable foods can be divided into three groups, animal, vegetable, and dairy. Each group requires separate treatment to preserve the products and keep them edible. The storage of animal products requires the preservation of the deterioration of the product. In other words, we can't let it start to rot. Fruits and vegetables require an entirely different set or preservation conditions. The principal food causes of food spoilage are microbiological bacteria, molds, and fungi, enzymes, these are chemicals in nature and do not deteriorate. Oxidization changes. These are caused by atmospheric oxygen coming into contact with the food, producing discoloration and rancidity. Surface dehydration, which is called freezer burn, wilting. This applies to vegetables that lose their crispness. Suffocation. Certain fresh vegetables must have air. When sealed in cellophane bags, the bags must have holes. So let's start off with mold, meat, poultry, and seafood. Although poultry is a meat, it's classified as a separate category by the USDA. That's the United States Department of Agriculture. In regards to preservation, all of these products deteriorate through the action of bacteria. Sanitation is the most important factor in controlling bacteria. Air has many forms of bacteria that's present. One of the best ways of controlling bacterial infection is through the use of germicidal or ultraviolet lamps. Meats. The method of handling preservation and storage will depend on the type of product. For example, ham and bacon are normally smoked and sausage is cured in a dry room. Beef is aged. The aging process for beef allows its natural enzymes to act as a tenderizer. This utilizes the good efforts of the enzymes without the harmful effects of bacteria. Oxidization is detrimental to meats. It causes undesirable appearances and de detrimentation of the flavor. Dehydration can be controlled to a large extent by maintaining high humidity in the storage room. High humidity also protects against moisture loss, which lowers the weight of the product. Pork should be rapidly cooled after it's cut. This prevents destructive enzyme action and causes, that causes discoloration, rancidity, and poor flavor. The keeping quality of the variety of dry sausages produced depends on curing ingredients such as spices and the removal of moisture from the product by drying. Dry rooms are used to, to remove about 30% of the moisture to the point where the sausage will keep for a long time virtually without refrigeration. The USDA requires that a dry room for sausage be maintained at a temperature above 45 degrees and the length of the time in the room depends on the diameter of the sausage after stuffing and the method of preparation. For poultry, the problems associated with the preservation of poultry are similar to those in meat in many respects except that poultry spoils much faster. Poultry can be pre-cooled by the use of cold water without any detrimental effects. Seafood is the most perishable of all the animal foods, but yet there's a vast difference in the keeping quality of different kinds of fish. For example, swordfish can be kept refrigerated for 24 days and be in a more edible condition than mackerel that was refrigerated for 24 days. Commercial fish are usually refrigerated with ice. For fruits and vegetables, the unique situation with fruits and vegetables is that, that they're still alive after they are picked. Most fruits and vegetables are picked in an unripe condition. The purpose of refrigeration is to slow down the ripening process 
so that these products can reach consumers before spoiling. Vegetables lose their vitamin content quickly when surface drying takes place. Another way to improve the product when it reaches the user is to package it. This cuts down on surface drying. Packages are usually made of cellophane or some similar plastic product. These containers must have holes so the product can breathe. Otherwise, the product will die and spoil rapidly. A number of products require special treatment. For example, bananas are picked green and must be ripened for marketing. Banana ripening is initiated by the introduction of ethylene gas. For this to be effective, banana rooms have to be airtight. Refrigeration is provided using a refrigerant other than ammonia because ammonia leaks can damage the fruit. Banana rooms are cooled using 45 to 65 degree air. Keeping design temperature difference of 15 degrees and a refrigerant temperature 40 degrees is good practice. So for freezing vegetables, all prepared vegetables are pre-cooked and cooled before freezing. Refrigeration is used for every step of the preservation product. This includes raw product cooling and storage facility, cooling the product after blanching and freezing the product, and finally storing the product in a warehouse. Vegetable facilities that operate only for short periods at peak capacity, such as the orange food orange processing and the fruit processing plants in the south, they might only operate 1,500 to 2,500 hours per year. Spare equipment cannot be economically justified. So the bottom line, if it breaks down, it has to be fixed. There are no spares. For freezing potatoes, this includes products such as French fries, hash browns, twice baked potatoes, potato skins, boiled potatoes, Raw potatoes for fries are steam peeled and trimmed and then cut into desired shapes. The potatoes are blanched, that's scalded with hot water, partially dried and oil fried. They are frozen on a straight belt system with three separate conveyors for pre-cooling and totally freezing the fries for five to ten degree to five to ten degrees. Sorting is done at fifteen degrees, and packaging is done in air conditioned areas. For dairy products, sanitation is extremely important for all stages of handling milk. The bacteria content of milk must be controlled. Mechanical refrigeration begins to cool at even dream milking from 90 degrees down to 50 degrees within the first hour and from 50 to 40 degrees within the next hour. Electronic time clock, temperature clocks are used to track this cooling product and that's collected by the dairy processing plant when the milk is picked up. As more milk is added, the blended liquid must never rise above 45 degrees. Milk is stored in insulated or refrigerated type silo tanks that maintain a temperature of 40 degrees. After milk is pasteurized or homogenized, it is again cooled in a heat exchanger to 40 degrees or lower and packaged. Butter is manufactured from 30 to 40 degree percent cream obtained from the separation of warm acidified milk. It is cooled to 46 to 55 degrees and then churned to remove excess water. It is kept for several months. The temperature should not be above zero degrees and preferably below negative 20 degrees. For short periods of time, 30 to 32 to 40 degrees is satisfactory. Cheese is refrigerated to prevent too rapid growth. The surface must be kept moist or the cheese will become hard and brittle. The ideal temperature for various cheeses is in the range of 30 to 34 degrees for natural cheese and 45 degrees for processed cheeses. The maximum temperature range from 45 to 60 degrees for natural cheeses while the processed cheeses can be kept on open shelves at 75 degrees. Eggs account for 75% of all eggs used are the shell eggs. Research has shown that microbial growth associated with salmonella can be controlled by holding eggs at less than 40 degrees. All egg storage units should maintain an ambient temperature of 45 degrees. So storage periods of eggs at various temperatures are on this chart here, 51 to 60 
degrees with 75 to 80% relative humidity two to three weeks. 45 degrees with 75 to 80 two to four weeks. 29 to 31 degrees with 85 to 92 relative humidity five to six months. Freezing of food is basically a time temperature related process of three phases. You have to cool it to the freezing point. You change the water into in the product to ice, and then you lower the freezing temperature to optimum frozen storage temperatures. The following factors are considered in selecting a freezing system for a specific product. What are the special handling requirements? How much are you freezing? How fast do you want it frozen? What are the quality considerations? What is the appearance of the product you're looking for? And how much do you want to spend? So flash freezing is a process that produces small ice crystals that are less damaging to the product. Flash freezing generally denotes a quick freezing at cryogenic temperatures of a below 238 degrees. That's a negative 238 degrees. Foods are frozen at temperatures between negative 20 and negative 5 degrees. Commercial freezing systems can be divided into four groups, air blast freezers, contact freezers, immersion freezers, and cryogenic freezers. Air blast freezers is best described as a convection system where cold air at high velocities are circulated over a product. The air removes the heat from the product and releases it to an air heat exchanger before circulation occurs again. This is an example of an air blast freezer. This method is used, commonly used to freeze blueberries. It is also used in some applications such as of seafood, such as fillet of fish. Immersion freezers are the fastest of method available for flash freezing. The product is passed through a shallow liquid nitrogen bath, which forms a crust, which in turn freeze locks in the flavor and moisture of a product. Examples of food that use this is shrimp is frozen using this method. So again, we have a conveyor belt. We pass the product through a stream of liquid nitrogen. Cryogenic freezers use both convection and or conduction by exposing the product to a temperature below negative 76 degrees in the presence of liquid nitrogen or liquid carbon dioxide refrigerant. Liquid nitrogen boils at negative 320 degrees. Carbon dioxide boils at approximately negative 110 degrees. The boiling liquid comes in direct contact with the product. Internal freezers can reach temperatures of negative 150 degrees. So refrigeration equipment and loads are the ref is one of the most important aspects of this. Refrigerant is used in many large refrigeration systems is ammonia. Glycol chillers are also used to avoid the hazard of potential ammonia spills to the workers in the plant. Glycol chillers are used to circulate propylene glycol to evaporators located in the production area. Ammonia is an extremely hazardous chemical. If you go buy a plant that is using ammonia, you will see a windsock on the roof of that plant. That windsock is there to tell workers which way not to go to in the event of an ammonia leak. You do not go downwind of the plant. So this is just an example of a 2,500 ton centrifugal duplex chiller and a 100 or a 1,000 ton glycol chiller. These are, this type of equipment all lives in its own mechanical room. So... Food preservation is probably the most important thing a refrigeration technician has to be aware of. It's very important for a refrigeration technician to know the products and know what is safely and legally required for the food preservation. There's a number of times you will come in contact with restaurant managers and employees who know it's supposed to be cold, but don't know the time and how cold it is actually supposed to be. So your job as a refrigeration technician is you do have to know this stuff.